Hey everybody, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, back again for another interview tonight, um, talking to Liron Amitsi from Canada. And um, Liron is one of the speakers in the Oracle Groundbreakers Yatra that's taking place uh, right now, actually, online. And uh, Liron, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to meet you. Um, we were just having a conversation before I clicked record here, and uh, I was just telling you that uh, I'm reaching out to speakers that I haven't met yet. You know, there's, there's, this particular conference has got like, I think it's over 100 speakers or some insane number like that, because um, it's running for like two and a half weeks, you know. Um, it's huge. It's just it's just a monster of a conference. Um, usually, obviously, the Oracle Groundbreakers Yatra is live. It's an actual tour of multiple tech cities in India. I was on it last year. It was really, really great. Um, but now we're virtual, and uh, let's see what we can do with this here. Um, I um, I saw on your on the schedule lecture that you're doing two talks. Let's start off with your talks and then we'll talk about community and some other things as well so you got this first talk here better design um sorry better designed than sorry let's design our db schema so why do i not want to be sorry in the design process oh so um the process of db design is very um uh, like built into, into the application so when you write your application, when you access the data, it depends which table you access and how you access them. So to design the tables, that's something you need to do at the, at, at the beginning. If, if something is wrong along the way, it's very difficult to change that. Um, so I picked the title and I, I specifically chose uh, intriguing titles. So better design than sorry. So you should design your database or your schema ahead of time to match your requirements, then, you know, figure out later, then it's not optimal. And then changing that, it's a, it's a huge mess. So how, how common is it that people would just, you know, jump right in without thinking beforehand about the overall schema? Oh, it does happen. It yeah. definitely happens. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you go, actually, <laughs> actually, it's funny. It, it, it relates to the, the other session as well. And we'll talk about the other session, I guess, soon. Um, but the, the thing is that, you know, sometimes uh, clients have performance problems. I'm a consultant, so I'm going to different clients. And then sometimes they have a performance problem. And, you know, one of the performance problems is because of the table structure and the relationship between tables or, and how they designed it. And then when you ask them, it doesn't matter what the answer is, why they did that, if it was, you know, after a thought or, or not. But almost always the answer is, okay, we cannot change that. So this is, you know, this is what you have and we should do our best in given this design or given these circumstances. So it happens. Quite so often. what are some of the thought processes? What are some of the decisions that uh, DBA would need to go through to make a really, really good design? Yeah, it's not only DBA. Um, this process involves sometimes product management, sometimes uh, obviously the development as well. So uh, it's a, it's a, it should be a big process when you design the, the application. In general, you should design a database schema to, to match that as well. And some of the things are like uh, performance issues and data integrity issues. I've had quite a few uh, clients or scenarios where data integrity was a problem because they they took, for example, they took uh, a few tables with objects and then one table with relationship between everything. Okay, and this is from RDBMS, relational database point of view, you cannot actually enforce too many things in the database itself because it's it's weird to handle relationship between multiple tables at the same time. So you can do all kinds of triggers and code in the database that, that handles that. But I've had a few cases, quite a few cases, when this was the design, you know, we had problems. And when you figure out, try to figure out what the problem is, it, we realized that, that data integrity was um, 
you know, we had a problem with the data, data integrity. So some relationship was there, but another relationship which was required wasn't there. And that was because of, I don't know, all kinds of weird bugs in the application. And they needed to figure this out and, and, and try to fix it. And it's, it's not always easy. Uh, so I had performance issue, I had data integrity issues, um, sometimes storage issue, issues because some designs require more storage than others, but that's usually, especially these days, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, these, these are mainly um, topics that you hit if you, if you don't make the, the right decisions. Yeah, I think making the right decisions up front, especially before you build something. I used to be in the construction business, um, which is sort of a developer. Um, yeah. In fact, we used all the same terminology back then. It's really interesting. Um, but yeah, it's you, the same, right? You can't you can't fix things after like if if it's something fundamental. That's that's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. You need to be able to read the surveys correctly because you want to put the house on the right foundation at the right offsets, you know. Um, You need to read the spec really well before you implement. This is all the same language um, because it's it's hard to move a house, you know. It's hard, you know. So presumably if you build a database and you haven't designed it well and it's scaling up to millions of users and and, and things like this, um, then it would be hard to fix it after yeah. it's done. You if know. you need, you know, sometimes the requirement, it, it's all based on the requirements. Sometimes the requirements are, I don't have millions of users. I have just, I don't know, a few, but I have this and this with my data and I want to do, you know, specific queries or specific logic or something like that, or, or history saving or something like that. And, and people usually don't think about, for example, history or archiving of all data and then the, these tables just grow and grow and grow and at some point you realize okay i can't handle or this hardware can't handle handle this this much data and you need to figure out what to do but if you thought about that at the beginning you know you could prepare some archive uh, mechanism and then you wouldn't have this problem right so it's not always scale up but in some cases, it's even with relatively small amount of data, and it depends on the hardware as well, right? So if you have very weak hardware, hardware uh, or low-end hardware, um, you need to match the design and the, the data and, and what you do with it, with what you've got. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> you said the second talk is related, and the second talk also has a very interesting title, Real life SQL tuning from four minutes to eight seconds in an hour. Yeah. So that's going to happen July 15th. Um, the very end. That's the very sorry? end. That's yeah. the very end. I think, yeah, it goes I think to the 16th 16. is yeah. the last day, right? Yeah. So the day of the last. Um, and it is a little bit related, but not really. But it has some aspects of design because what what happens with this session? The concept is a real SQL tuning case. Okay, this is something that happened. It's a true story, but it happened. Uh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, maybe maybe a little bit less, but something like that. Um, and this was a, a client that called me because they had a performance problem with with one of the, of the screens in the application, some sort of a dashboard. And um, and the thing is, I called it four minutes to eight seconds because this query started with execution time of four minutes. And after the entire process, we got to eight seconds, which is a, a, quite a big in, <laughs> that's improvement. A pretty, that's a pretty big delta there. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I like about this talk is that uh, the scenario is relatively simple to explain, but it involves all kinds of different um, aspects of of tuning because when we talk about SQL tuning, usually people say, "Oh, the optimizer or statistics or indexes or stuff like that," which is, you know, pure the Oracle side of executing query. Um, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's related to the design. Sometimes it's related to the application logic. So what I do with this session is I go through all the aspects of SQL tuning, including the application design, including the logic, inclu- including the SQL themselves, and then, you know, also the, the Oracle execution part. And I explain the scenario and 
and then we we go one by one and we figure we understand what the problem was and then you know changing that a little bit and fixing that a little bit and and we got only to eight seconds because of the application design because of the not the application because of the schema design because they did some something weird that this was basically the only thing that we couldn't change mm -hmm. uh, because what I said before that's something that it's really hard to change but if we could change that or design that from the start I'm sure we we would get this query to run in much less than eight seconds so to, well okay let's just stick for the four minutes to eight seconds to eight seconds in your consulting work do you do you is that a common story you go into a client and they're having problems and and, and you're able to get that amount of of improvement it seems Sometimes. seems pretty broken four minutes yeah it depends what you know what you're running if it's a dashboard it's broken if it's a report maybe it's not that bad okay. um but yeah sometimes sometimes when when you have a performance problem um sometimes it, it depends what the problem is sometimes it's a very easy fix like indexes but that's usually on the let's say the learned customers the customers that then don't really understand the, the database because they are a startup and they don't have a DBA or, or something like that. For the bigger, more um, database uh, aware, let's say, clients, usually it's not that, the, the improvement is not that big and usually the challenge is, is much more difficult. Uh, but yeah, sometimes sometimes we do manage to, 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 to fix things like that. Wow. Uh, sometimes we find uh, all kinds of bugs or different Oracle behaviors that we need to, to fix or, or, you know, work around. Um, and sometimes it's really difficult or sometimes it, take, it takes time to, to find where the problem is. But if you find the right problem or the, the, the exact area that, that there is a problem, um, you can you can improve it by quite a lot. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I would love to go into a client and and get that kind of improvement. Um, on yeah, it takes time though. You know, I I present that in an hour, but you know, it took like I think two or three days. I was there, and yeah. and it's really easy in retrospect. It re it's really easy to say, oh, this was the problem, and this is how we fixed it. But when you're in it, it's really yeah difficult to, to figure out all the moving pieces and, and to understand where the problem really is and, and you know, connect all the dots in order to, to solve this puzzle. Yeah. I'm particularly interested in that process that you just articulated, actually. I'm particularly interested just at a personal level um, with how technical people solve really, really hard problems. And I, I find, I find, because I've worked in engineering organizations. I used to work in Sun's Solaris engineering organization um, on the Open Solaris project. This is obviously before Oracle. Um, and I've worked in marketing as well, uh, so both at Sun and at Oracle. And then the thinking process about how those two groups of people you know, actually go about attacking problems is very, very different. And um, so whenever I get around you know, technical people or even scientists and, you know, and, you know, PhDs and, you know, things like that, um, they go through a, a different thinking process. And I'm especially interested in that. So as you struggle through hard problems like that, that's just a kind of a hobby of mine to listen to those stories. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very interesting. All the troubleshooting right. uh, yeah, mechanism or process, let's say. Uh, my wife is actually a PhD student in, in biology. And I remember in, in the past, at least when she did her, her um, undergrad or her master's, we talked about all kinds of different things. And biology is completely different than computers, <laughs> right? Computers is, is very deterministic. Biology is very not deterministic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we were talking about all kinds of different things in biology. And I, I was implementing my you know, computer science troubleshooting uh, process and she said no it doesn't work that way <laughs> but you know once in a while I, I did give her uh, an idea or or something that she said oh you know what that's you know an interesting approach um, 
because yeah, troubleshooting is 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 troubleshooting. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. But the different fields approach it differently. You know, different fields. Yeah. And, but I'm just interested in the thinking process of how you get from a surface level problem. You know, you observe a problem and how you're able to get from here all the way to here. All the different steps you have to take because you're solving problems that are much much lower level thinking than you are up on here, up, up on your yeah. top. You just don't walk up to a problem and say, oh yeah, it's that. You got to think about it. You got to transcend a little bit, you know, and I don't know, that's just an aside. Um, no, it, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I ask yeah. a lot of questions, by the way. What's people, that? People, I ask oh. a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. People, uh, when I interview people, um, I, I usually ask these kind of very open questions and I see how the person reacts. And sometimes it's like, uh, okay, you have a performance problem. Like, you know, the client says, this is the, the interview question. The client says that, you know, the system is slow. What do you do? And some people dive right in and say, oh, we need to check, you know, these processes and what happens and, you know, this report and stuff. Uh, and at the beginning, I, I help them and I say, okay, but, you know, you first need to understand what, the, what they mean by, you know, the system is slow. And then, you know, they take a step backwards and say, oh, okay, so... Is it happening now? Is it usually in the certain certain days and times of the of the day? And you know, and then and then it, when you ask question, you you actually build a puzzle right. in in my head. You build a puzzle, and then there are some missing pieces. And these missing pieces is more questions that you need to ask, and and things that you need to start checking. And then right. you start you know drill down into the specific issue. Yeah, there's a lot of neuroscience here. I'm really, I'm really interested. In it. And then when you go to sleep, your mind still works on it all night long, right? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're also an Oracle Ace director. Right. And uh, I, I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, you're an instructor, you do teaching, and you are involved in the British Columbia user group. Yeah. Um, so it seems like, you know, you're, you're obviously involved with clients and you're doing that work, uh, that technical work, but you're also out in the community. And, you know, I know obviously for being an Oracle Ace director, you're traveling and you're giving presentations and things like that. So the community seems to be, um, a, you know, a part of your interests at least, right? Yeah, definitely. I love that. Uh, and it sucks that we can, we can have these conferences now. Yeah. Um, yeah, even more for me because I'm working from home. Um, I'm originally from Israel and we moved to Canada five years ago. So in Israel, I worked in an office in, with people. But since I moved to Canada, I've, uh, I've been working from home. So basically, I don't have, you know, many, much socialization with other people during the normal working days. Uh, and these conferences, they, they really give me these social interactions that I need. Uh, and it really sucks that we can't have that now. But I love these conferences. I was involved with the Oracle User Group community in Israel. And I, I, w once I knew I, I moved to, I, I'm moving to Canada, I looked for the local Oracle User Group and I became part of them. And after it couple of years or maybe three uh the the president decided to you know move on and and i took the the president role of the group so now we're not very active because of this pandemic but uh but we are trying to be quite active and and have conferences here as well and i invite people um and i go to conferences um and i i love this part it's it's part of who i am i guess so do you have any advice for, say, younger uh, developers or DBAs or really anybody in the field? Um, you know, I mean, how, how would they sort of, you know, if they go to a conference that, you know, you're speaking at, let's say, you know, and they're asking you questions after you come off the stage and they say, you know, this uh, Oracle Ace Director, you know, Groundbreaker Ambassador, Java Champion, you know, you're contributing to Open, you're doing all these different things, you know, how do I do that? You know, that, that would be a question. What would you, you know, how would you guide them? Um, first of all, I would say that it, it needs to be something that you love doing. Okay, if you don't li like 
writing blogs and speaking and you know socialize or something like that that's maybe that's not for you now you can be very very technical and you can write your own blog and that's fine or do other stuff and you can be an expert but the the thing about the Oracle user group and and the Oracle ace program and the Java champions and all of these or the groundbreaker basically which is the, the general name for everything um, is all about the community so if you love being part of the community and you love to contribute that's the way to go and then I would say start speaking at conferences or first of all go to conferences and social socialize with people and many people have a stage fright um, so I know I know that many many people speakers and Oracle aces and everyone in the community will be happy thrilled to help young people or or um, uh, beginners let's say in the speaking world um, they would love helping them so just approach people that you um, respect and talk to them about that and then you know start this process of speaking conferences and if you're into writing a blog write a blog don't force yourself to to do that because you know if you force yourself and you don't enjoy that you'll you'll drop the ball after a while yeah uh, so find the things that you love and Oracle, being an Oracle Ace or Oracle Ace director, I don't think it's a goal. It's a recognition of what you did. So if you become involved, if you become involved with the community, if you speak at conferences, if you write a blog, if you if you contribute to the community, user groups, and and so on, you will see that eventually people know you, and then the recognition will will come. Cool. It's interesting. I asked this question to a lot of people because um. um you know, selfishly looking, actually looking for the feedback for myself as well, because um, I, I've done a lot of community development work um, and I'm going to be doing a talk at this conference tomorrow uh, on community development. So uh, just a general, just a general talk on some principles that I've, I've picked up over the years and um, everything that, everything that you say is consistent. So that's good. I know I'm, I know I'm fairly on track, so that's yeah. good. Um, so, all right. Well, Liron, um, it was great talking to you. Uh, I learned a lot, as usual, with these things. And hopefully next year or the year after, uh, <laughs> we'll be able uh, to meet um, in India or in California or Israel uh, or wherever. Um, the India community, you're obviously presenting at, at, at OG Yatra here. The India community is, is really dynamic. They're very smart. And but they're also very very engaging as well. So maybe next year we'll get you out on the on the tour to ten cities uh, for the real OG Yatra. Uh, Yatra means journey, by the way, for you guys listening. It's just journey. Um, so it's a it's a tour. It's a anyway, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. Bye bye now.